regiment time where the bulk of the Dwarf army will be. Well, at least 25% of it anyway. Now, the Dwarfs don't have any variable unit sizes. All their units had a minimum size of 5 models, as they didn't really have any monstrous infantry or anything like that that usually has variable sizes. But anyway, which units first? Well, it's the Longbeards. The Longbeards get the name as they are the oldest living Dwarfs in the army, and their beards have become long and grizzled to show it. They have fought in more wars, beaten more enemies, endured more hardships than younger Dwarfs can even imagine. They are also incredibly grumpy and constantly complaining, though. Goblins are weedier nowadays, nothing is well made, the runes are weaker than it was in their youth, and other such grumbles. This has made them incredibly stubborn, but they are still competent fighters compared to your standard dwarf. Longbeards were a 0 to 1 choice and 15 points a model. They were movement 3, from skill 5, this skill 3, strength 4, toughness 4, runes 1, initiative 3, Attacks 1, leadership 9. Equipment wise, they had hand axes, shields, and heavy armor, and they could take a standard musician for 30 points and were allowed magical ones. Special rules wise, nothing unique to them, just the standard dwarf ones. And that's it! Yeah, they're pretty standard back in the day, just a more improved dwarf warrior unit than anything really. Still, next up we have the Hammerers. These dwarfs are the king's personal bodyguard. A group of tough fighting men who guard the king's chambers while he's in the hold and accompany him to battle when raging war. They get their name for the variety of different hammers they wield, from simple single handed ones to powerful double handed ones capable of breaking the bones of any foe they hit with relative ease. Now, hammerers are basically exactly the same as longbeards, literally, same points, zero to one choice, stats the same, standing position, same. The equipment is where it's different. So, hammerers have heavy armor shields and a hammer hand weapon base, but for two points a model, can replace it with a double handed hammer. So yeah, they're pretty much another long beard unit, but the double handed weapons does make them strength 6, so they can do some hurt with them. Still, if you're wanting a more tanky unit... Hello Ironbreakers! Many dwarf holds have tunnels the dwarves have long since abandoned but they have found new tenants with goblins, skaven, and other horrors now lurking within them. The dwarves do barricade these tunnels, but these threats constantly try to break through, and when they do, are met with a wall of iron. The iron breakers guard these passages, wearing heavy iron engraved with the rune of stone, their whole purpose to hold the line while they wait for the hold to rally, and break the enemy's advance, assuring none get any further into the hold. Iron breakers were also a 0-1 choice, but 20 points a model. They were movement free, Front skill 5, plus skill 3, strength 4, toughness 4, runes 1, initiative 3, attacks 1, leash at 9. Now equipment wise, they had hand weapons, shields and heavy armour, but the heavy armour had the rune of stone inscribed onto it, giving them a 3 plus save. They could have a musician and standard for 40 points, and like the previous ones, allow magical ones. Now they had the standard special rules, however any champion that joined their unit had to take a runic armour piece with the rune of stone on it for the usual point cost. However, this did not count as the one magic item they were allowed, so the champion could have another one. Yep, Iron Breakers were indeed the tanks of the army, and not bad of holding off enemies with that 3 plus save. Still, on to the baseline Dwarf Warriors. Dwarf Warriors are strong and resilient, capable of dealing with hard physical work. They are grim and determined fighters, who will fight in battles most other races would decide to flee from. This is due to how incredibly stubborn they are, refusing to run away from a foe in all but the most desperate circumstances. But even when they do, they usually try to recover quickly to settle the new grudge that has just been made against them. Dwarf Warriors were 11 points, and movement 3, got a skill 4, this skill 3, strength 3, toughness 4, runes 1, initiative 2, attacks 1, leadership 9. Equipment wise, they came with a hand weapon, light armour, and shield base. They could take spears for 1 point a model or two-handed weapons for two points a model. Musician and standards were 22 points, and they're also allowed magic ones. Special rules wise, as you can guess, just the usual dwarf ones. Yep, pretty standard for a frontline troop, but I've got to say, the Warhammer dwarfs with spears just feels a bit wrong, and I'm not sure they actually had models for them either. Hmm. Still, onto their ranged options. And dwarves had two variations for this. You see, dwarves are not physically designed for spying standard bows of any kind, 
their attempts to do so have not gone well. As such, they build powerful crossbows, firing bolts capable of piercing armour at long range, or the truly skilled become thunderers. These dwarves carry large handguns and get their name due to the amount of noise they make when they all fire their guns at once, which when firing their tunnels echoes for miles. Both of them with 13 points and movement 3, weapon skill 4, blitz skill 3, strength 3, toughness 4, runes 1, initiative 2, attacks 1, leadership 9. Now equipment wise, they both had light armour. The crossbowmen of course had crossbows, but could also have two handed weapons for two points and shields for one point. The Thunderers just have their handgun and nothing else, though if the champion joined them, the champion had to buy a handgun and could do so for three points, and the only character allowed to do that. Standard musician were 26 points for both, and were also allowed magic banders. Yeah, the two ranged units were nice options. The Thunderers were more powerful at range, but struggled in combat, while the crossbowmen gave up some range damage for the double handed weapons let them do okay at both. Now, next up we have the Miners. The Dwarf Holds are ever expanding as they look for new metals and resources they require for their kingdoms. As such, the Miners have the important role of digging out new areas for the Hold and mining resources as per their name. However, even they are not excluded when war comes. They march into battle with their fellow Dwarves, now wielding their pickaxes as powerful double handed weapons. Miners were a 0 to 1 choice and 13 points a model. They were movement 3, weapon skill 4, Bit skill 3, strength 3, toughness 4, runes 1, initiative 2, attacks 1, leadership 9. Equipment wise, they had double handed weapons and heavy armor base, and could take shields for 1 point. Musician and standards were 26 points, and they were allowed magic ones. And nothing special for them either, other than the dwarf ones. I think the miners really show that for most dwarf units, it really came down to what basic equipment you wanted them to have. As, yeah, standard rules and nothing special about them even compared to things like warriors and the others. Hmm. Still, the last unit though is an exception to this. The Slayers. Dwarfs do not cope easy with failure or loss. Should something terrible befall a dwarf, like the loss of family, failure to honour a promise or oath, or anything else that stains their honour, if they can't write it normally, they will take up the Slayer Oath. They dye their hair orange, forgo all their possessions, and now venture out into the wilds of the old world to seek glory and death to redeem themselves. This is because their stubbornness still holds, and they refuse to die easily, so will always fight at their best, and allowing some slayers to become some of the greatest warriors in the old world as they slay bigger and bigger foes. Slayer units were made up of troll slayers and 11 points per model, and you could only have one slayer unit for each other dwarf unit you had. They were movement free, from skill 4, but skill 3, strength 3, toughness 4, runes 1, initiative 2, attacks 1, leash at 9. Now equipment wise they all came with a hand weapon, but could take another one for 1 point, or a two handed weapon for 2 points. The unit also didn't have to be equipped the same way, so you could have a mix in your unit if you wanted. The musician and standard were 22 points, but no magic ones for them. Now they had a few special rules alongside the normal dwarf ones. First, they don't take leadership tests or psychology tests ever. Anything that could cause them to have one of those is worth dying to, so they are sticking around. The other is they've all gotten very good at fighting tough opponents to the point they know the ideal places to strike and ruin them. As such, Troll Slayers would anything up to tough to seven on fours at least. Yeah, not a durable unit, but you could throw them at monsters, they can do some good damage to them. And that is it for regiments. Yeah, interesting how compared to other armies they didn't have much unique rules for any of their units. Heck, most armies had several pages explaining the lore and rules of each unit, you know, usually like say 10 or so. The dwarves had three and a half and slayers take up one and a half of them. Still, while the core regiments are pretty standard, the dwarf war machines are a very different story, and we'll be looking at them next time and see what the dwarf engineers brewed up back then. See you then.